It's been 10 months since the Elite Series 2 came out. It's time for a long-term update. Ten months ago, Microsoft released this guy, the Elite Series 2, and I've been using it, well, quite a bit since it came out. And while I do a lot of long-term updates on this channel, this one is particularly important because of this guy, which was the original, the OG Elite Series. And as you can hopefully see here, it completely fell apart. This is no surprise. This has been pretty common that the rubber on the handles just completely disintegrated or decoupled from the controller and just made it a less than pleasant experience for how many dollar dues that thing cost. Well, how has the Series 2 held up? Well, let's just talk about it with some B-roll rolling. So the Elite Series 2 is not cheap. It is $179 and it is just, it's a serious premium. It's $110 more than a standard controller. And the question is, should you buy it for that kind of money? Well, Microsoft was promising about 40 hours of battery life on this thing. And it does have a sealed battery compartment. And I, while I'm still not a huge fan of that, I can tell you I'm getting about 30 to 35 hours of usage out of it, which is candidly for me that is pretty good um, I use my controller about maybe 10 hours a week or so so it's not something that I never touch I mean I'm using this thing to play a lot of Warzone and it has held up honestly pretty well as you can see here in this b-roll footage you don't see any of the plastic that has been separated uh, the rubber on the hand grip so far has been holding firm and you can see the button for the uh, for the syncing between your Xbox console is actually still good on my older elite controller it actually broke and kind of got stuck in and so you can see here from the top that it does stay pretty clean you can clean it up pretty well with a microfiber cloth but it's not perfect it's going to get that nacho grease on it it's not it's it's a controller that your hands are all over and in some of the joints around like the thumbstick or the hand uh, where your hands are held you can get some dirt in there that is a little bit more of a pain in the butt uh, to well to get out of the controller for candidly the easiest way to put it but the bumpers have held up well all the buttons are still tactile and everything about the controller is still super premium the weight is good the tactile feedback is good the fact that you can adjust the tension on the thumbsticks is still good my button mashing is still working well and overall my experience with the controller has been phenomenal I really don't have too many complaints but there are some minor issues that you should know about one aside from keeping it clean sometimes when you drop it uh, it explodes and what I mean by that is because the thumbsticks come off because the d-pad comes off and because the paddles in the back come off if you drop it and I have done that before the things just all kind of fall out and end up in various places under the couch and always in places that you can never seem to find until you go vacuuming three months later but that is a rare occurrence, but it does happen, and it's just something to be aware of. The other thing you need to be aware of is that while I have not personally had any stick drift issues, there are some notable threads on the internet that are saying, hey, out of the box, this thing has some major problems. And now it does look like some of the issues may have been resolved, uh, but Microsoft did acknowledge that there were issues with the device. Uh, coming out of the box in some of the early run units where either the stick drift was pretty apparent or uh, particularly the B button was getting stuck when pressed down. So there, it's not a perfect controller and you're rolling the dice a little bit when you go buy one. But just keep in mind that Microsoft does honor their warranty and it sounds like, it, you know, at least from the get go at 10 months into this thing, it does sound like if you're going to have an issue, it's going to be really, really, really early on. Um, I've been using this again, like I said, for 10 months and I do not have any of the issues. Now I do tighten the, the tension down a little bit on the thumbsticks and I don't know if that is it's sort of maybe stopping some of the stick drift that other people are seeing, but I keep it very tight. Uh, it just That's just the way I prefer to keep the thumbsticks and overall no major issues to report. The question is, should you go out and spend $179 on this controller? And it's really hard to say yes or no because on some respects, this is the only part of the console that you really touch and interact with, right? You, do, you might turn the button on, on the console every once in a while, but this is the, the actual portion of the Xbox console that you touch. And if you're a big gamer and you're playing all the time, then yeah, it might be a worthwhile investment because it is a great experience. I really do like this controller and everyone who has a good iteration of it absolutely loves it. And there's really nobody who says otherwise, but the challenge is, is that you have to spend $110 more than a standard Xbox One controller or Xbox Series X controller. And is that worth it? I don't know. 
To you, it may not be because the original Xbox controller is actually pretty dang good. And so what you're paying here for are the fit and finishes that come with this. Now, the paddles on the back, super helpful in Warzone. I have one map to reload and the other one map to crouch. It does make things a little bit better and it might give you a slight competitive advantage uh, over somebody who does not have those features on their controller. So if you're looking for the absolute edge and potential victories, uh, the Elite controller might get you there. That, that could be a tangible benefit for somebody who really, really enjoys gaming but on the other side it's there's so many variables in gaming anyways with latency with online play with the servers and all that stuff it may not honestly matter at the end of the day what you need to decide is 110 dollars for a better xbox experience worth it and to a small demographic the answer is absolutely yes i think for the vast majority of people that answer is actually no and i don't blame them because the, like i said the controller is good the original controller there's no real issues with it but this controller does have a lot to offer you can see these are the two paddles i only keep two on the back you can put up to four but i only use two because four it just it gets a little unwieldy and then of course you do get the the little carrying case i don't use this personally actually i took the charger out which is hard to see here because it's all black you can see the other accessories i put the charger uh just next to my console and it's plugged in the back and i can just drop this thing on there uh when it does need to get charged and the other thing to keep in mind is some people say well how do you know you're almost out of battery do you have to look on the dashboard there's a little light on here that will just light up uh, long before. It's usually when there's about 20% left, so it's not an emergency when it turns on, but it does help you understand when you need to start thinking about charging. That being said, I do like this controller. I, I really think Microsoft has a hit on its hands. I do think it is overpriced. This thing at $129, I think would fly off the shelves and be much easier to justify. But right now, Microsoft is holding pretty firm on that $179 price point. I have seen it on sale with um, various retail outlets for like about $169. And I think the lowest I ever saw was $159, but that was, I believe, a refurbished uh, controller. So keep your eyes out to see if Microsoft does anything. And I'd also love to get a white version of this. Um, just, you know, we, we've got the black. A white version makes a lot of sense. Microsoft does a lot of black and white consoles. It wouldn't surprise me to see them start shipping that kind of stuff. So at the end of the day, 10 months in, is the controller holding up well? Yeah, I mean, this is like, you can, it's kind of hard to see on this view, but as I go back to the spinning you know, view one more time here, look really, really closely at where the handheld grips are, because that is what everybody's concerned about, about separating, because that is absolutely what got destroyed on the old version. And I am pretty confident right now that mine are not showing any signs of, of popping off. So it looks like Microsoft really, really put a lot of focus or just honestly a lot, a lot of glue back there to get it done. Um, but if you're having any concerns about longevity, I don't think that's the real concerns with this controller, at least in this iteration. I think if any issues, uh, it's gonna be out of the box. So if you get a good unit out of the box, you should be good for the long run. If you don't get a good unit out of the box, well then obviously take it back until you do get a good one. Um, but $179, if you don't have a retail outlet that's close by to be swapping these things on the frequent, that could be be a significant challenge but there you go that is a long-term update to the elite series 2 which by the way when it was announced if you remember the series name was sort of awkward we didn't understand why but obviously now with the series x and potentially the series s uh, depending on when you're watching this video coming or at least being announced here in the near future the series name does make a lot more sense so there you go 10 months in the controller is holding up well i'll do another long-term follow-up especially if i see any sort of um like you know the peeling off of the grips or anything like that as always, guys, hit that subscribe button. Catch you right back here next time.